Today, we're gonna be testing out thermoforming your 3D prints. I hope I am saying that correct. Basically, what we're gonna be doing is printing some objects, then applying some heat to them, and then pressing them into shape. Now, if you do any kind of cosplay 3D printing, you might already be familiar with this technique because I use this all the time when it comes to better sculpting, shaping an object to fit my head or different body parts. Here's an example of a set of He-Man here that I previously printed and it fits okay, but with a little bit of thermoforming, AKA using my heat gun to warm up the print, I can then manipulate the object to better fit the form of my head. So I'm gonna fire up some of these prints over on my Elegoo Centauri Carbon, which Elegoo just so happens to be the sponsor of today's video. The Elegoo Centauri Carbon is not only a budget friendly, but also a fast Core XY fully enclosed 3D printer that prints amazing, has tons of built out profiles, supporting everything from PLA to PETG to TPU to ABS to A. ASA. Elegu also recently posted an update showcasing the original Centauri Carbon printing with four colors using the Elegu canvas system mounted on the side of the printer. Now, I don't know if this means that there's still going to be a separate AMS style hub coming for this, but it's great to see that they posted some kind of update when it comes to multicolor 3D printing and the CC. So hopefully we'll hear more about that here in the upcoming months and fingers crossed, I'll be able to show it to you all very soon. And again, if you're looking for an affordable, fast 3D printer, that prints amazing, the Centauri Carbon might be the perfect printer for you. I'll have links again down below where you can find more information about all of Elegoo's products. All right, I've got everything printed and I'm very excited to test this all out. This basically consists of a two-part mold jacket here that you're gonna be using to clamp the printed part in place, heating it up, and then pressing the two parts together to create your object. Now, the other fun part with this is just experimenting with the object that you're gonna be molding into place. So with these little bulbs here, you're gonna print these flat on the build plate, but you're gonna use no top and no bottom infill, and it's just really gonna be utilizing the infill pattern for your print object. And what you can do is vary the infill percentage as well as the infill type to get some really unique results. All right, so let's give this a go. I'm gonna try heating this up and not burning my hands. I need to put it inside the mold before heating it up because look at it, as soon as I heat this up, it shrank the object so it's no longer fitting inside the mold. This time putting it inside the mold jacket here and we're gonna heat this up. Oh, that's looking good. Let's try pressing this into place. All right, so my first attempt at this, you can clearly see it is just getting stretched and pulled on the very ends versus throughout the whole thing. I think I need to maybe potentially do a lower heat setting, sort of like a, a low and slow versus the rapid heating to get this to stretch properly. All right, we're gonna try this again, going from the top down. Oh, this is the way. Oh yeah, look, at it's stretching it a little too much though. It's ripping away at the sides here. I'm just gonna heat this up ever so slightly. Maybe that's what I'll do. I'll just keep the heat gun higher and keep moving it around. It instantly wants to melt the sides. I think this is just because they're so thin it wants to melt these. Maybe just warm it up a little bit. Yeah, I think maybe that's what it is. You just need to warm it up a little bit. Oh, that's the best one yet. That's the best one yet. Okay, that is pretty awesome. Uh, let's try it with the ABS. I mean, this is gonna definitely work the ABS, but now I feel like I've got a little bit of a better handle on how to do this. I'm gonna go low with the heat and start pressing down, moving it around. That turned out like perfectly, just perfect. It's a very fine dance of applying a little bit of heat and force to get these pressed into place. 
If you can get your hands on some Polymaker High Temp PLA, this material works great for this. Uh, the ABS and PETG, as expected, work also just as well for these mold boxes for you to be able to heat them up and not have to worry about them deforming. I, you could probably get away with basic PLA for these as well, as long as you're using a higher end fill percentage and probably like five walls or something like that to give it a much more durable finish. Now these were fairly large objects that were heating and pressing into place, but what I'm really interested in are these smaller objects, because what I have in mind for this is specifically around cosplay helmets. I feel like this would be such a cool process for someone like Galactic Armory or Yosh Studios to start implementing for the eye inserts for your masks. Instead of having to print the full eye insert, you could print one of these heat press mold kits and press fit the actual eye insert with your own custom set of webbing or infill pattern to give you the results that you're looking for. Now in my search for thermoforming files, I ended up finding this custom printed hair clip that requires you to print the hair clips nice and flat, but it also has you printing a mold box. Now the designer originally intended you to heat these up using boiling hot water so that it warms up the plastic that you can then heat these into shape. But I figure these are thin enough that we should be able to use the exact same method of warming these up with the heat gun and then pressing them into place. The other benefit of these, I think, is that they're a little bit thicker, which should hold up a little bit better to the actual stretching and bending of this pressing mechanism. Look at that. Uh, it, I think I bent it a little bit. I like slid it just ever so slightly, but that, look at how well that formed to the shape of this mold. That is so friggin' awesome. Again, printing your objects flat and then warping them to shape with these heat press molds. It's such a cool concept. Now, one of the first things that I thought about when seeing this was Hybe 3D and their 3D printed vending machine, which by the way, I'll be doing a video on here, hopefully in January or February, showcasing this crazy 3D printing project. But as part of this, they have these 3D printed containers that you can print to put your little prizes inside of. Well, the problem with this is you can't exactly see inside of it, which is great if you one of those little mystery balls, but I figured this would be a really great way to cut down on the amount of filament that's used as well as the print time, plus giving you the added benefit of being able to see inside of the little printed container. So I let them know about this concept and they thought it was a great idea and got to working on some 3D printable files, which I've printed here. And as expected, this new flat print design saves not only a lot on print time, but on the filament used to create the original balls. The original ones at a 0.2 layer height took 43 minutes to print and 32 grams of filament. These new ones take 20 minutes to print and only use eight grams of filament. That's gonna cut down on a lot of the print time and filament used when you're gonna be looking at printing and making a whole lot of these for those machines. These are also a good bit thicker than the original Christmas bulbs that I tried test printing. So I feel like these stretch just a little bit better on the edges here. And then they twist lock together to create your little containers. Now this clearly takes a little bit of trial and error to get all of this right, but I really think this has a lot of potential and I'm hoping that we see more of this in the upcoming year with different 3D print variations or designers taking this kind of concept and working it into their approach for creating and releasing designs. I also want to say a huge thank you to all my Patreon supporters for your continued support of me making videos just like this one here. If you're interested in more information about my Patreon, you'll find links to that down below. But let me know what you think of this concept of thermoforming, of heating up your 3D prints and shaping them into shape. Hey, thanks so much for watching you all. Have a great New Year's and I'll see you next time. Bye now. This is so satisfying, <laughs> it's ridiculously cool.